Hi, my name is Missy Mona. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to separate a drawing from paper with nothing but paint or sigh. It works well even if you have a photo of your drawing, but in this situation I actually have a scan. This is something that's often done with things like Photoshop, <clears throat> but I haven't really seen any tutorials for paint or sigh and so I thought this would be useful. So, the first thing you wanna do is make sure you name your layers. I'm gonna be naming this one one. You're going to want to go to Layer, beside Canvas and Selection, Copy. I'm going to be naming this layer two. At the moment, both of these layers are exactly the same. The next thing you want to do is go up into Filter. It'll be beside Selection and View, and then go into Brightness and Contrast. The reason you want to do this is because oftentimes the picture or photo of the drawing that you make is going to have a lot of dust particles or little marks. And what you want to do is to get rid of as much of that noise as possible so you'll be able to get a nice clean cut. What I like to do, and it does depend for each product, is I want the background to be as white as possible and I want the picture itself to have the darkest outline as possible. When you do this, make sure you don't do it to the point that it begins to get pixelated like this, as that might cause you issues down the line. I'm going to click undo. This should be more than enough. Because we have two images here, this one is simply used to get the selection that I need. This will not be what our finished product looks like. Next, you're going to want to go to the section that has your brushes and go from the selection area all the way over here to the magic wand. The magic wand works by <clears throat> selecting things of similar color threshold. You can see as I'm clicking that it'll select certain things within that. What you're going to want to do is to make sure that when you select the magic wand, that the selection is on color difference. Detect region from the color difference. That means that if the color is significantly different and of different saturations or a different value, it'll be able to recognize that. <clears throat> this will basically let you choose what the threshold is for how much it detects these things. If we go and put it all the way to 255, then it won't be able to recognize any color difference. If we put it to one, then not only will it recognize every color differences, but it might, it might even recognize things that we didn't intend for. For instance, it even selected this area up here, this tiny little premise of a mistake that I made in my artwork that had a little bit of yellow in areas that wasn't supposed to be. And because this is a JPEG image, sometimes when there's a slight bit of distortion in the image that comes from choosing something other, like, other than ping, <clears throat> There's a little bit of noise that's created. It takes a little bit to find the sweet spot, even when you try and make it, <clears throat> even when you try and make adjustments. Make sure that when you're doing things, you be careful of areas that overlap like this. These other areas of whites are actually mistakes in the artwork, not anything you need to worry about. 
You do not want to remove the color from spaces that are inside the lines. I'm going back to filter. And from filter, I'm going over to selection. You're going to want to invert the selection. When I scroll down to the show and hide next to the layer, I can see exactly what is being selected. You're going to go over down a bit and you're going to see select pen and select erase. You're going to want to use select erase to remove anything that you don't want in the selection. In this case, I do not want the little binder bits to be visible. Now that you have your selection, you're going to want to go back up to the selection tab up here and click invert. This will <clears throat> make it so the selection that you actually have is the background and that the character in question won't be selected at all. Selection carries over despite the layer that you're on, which means even though I made the selection on the edited layer, I can go down to the original. Just fixing up some loose ends that I saw. There we go. Make sure to go back to the layer of the original artwork that is unedited when you do this. The next thing you're going to want to do is go to edit scroll down to cut and that will remove the background. I'm making another layer and putting it underneath. I like to use a mid-tone to try and detect any mistakes that there might be. And I change the saturation between dark and light. In this case, what I have noticed is up here is a small bit of the page from the sketchbook that has been folded in a way that allows the background to be visible. I forgot to remove this. This is a simple fix, however. You can simply erase it or you can grab the lasso tool, click, release, and click cut. Now we have the image totally transparent from the background. Here's a neat little trick and something I would definitely recommend. Go to the selection over here select the entire image and click cut. Then undo as much as possible. Oh, control Z, then click paste. What this will do is give you the actual drawing that has been edited plus the original drawing that has been unedited. As you can see, you can't see the background underneath at all with it. 
the reason that you might want to do this is because sometimes you'll have a picture and there'll be parts that accidentally get caught out. <clears throat> By making it so you have both, you'll be able to fix any adjustments that are needed. And something else important is to always have a copy of your work. It's important to remember that while well, I can do this as many times and get as many copies of this image, that if I cut a new image, that that will be the only thing <clears throat> that comes back. That means that if you cut anything else while you have a special item that you have cut, that you won't be able to get it back. So keep that in mind. When I preview this with a dark background, I notice that it looks a little desaturated compared to the rich colors available for digital art. This can be fixed relatively easily. You simply go to filter and you can either go to hue and saturation or brightness and contrast. Brightness and contrast is my preferred for this. I'll tend to change the contrast so it's a little heavier and shift the brightness around so it's slightly darker. Color deepen can saturate or even make something go to grayscale. I usually shift these until it's at a point that I think looks nice. Another thing that you might want to do if you have a picture that's being particularly difficult is click over the image, click control, and then make a click while holding control and it'll select the entire image that is on the layer indicated. Then you can go to invert, so it is now selecting everything besides the image, and then increment. The reason this is useful is if you have a picture that isn't as dark as this, Things like pencil marks tend to get a little more mixed up and you'll have areas of white that you might not want. This will get rid of that by slowly removing areas <clears throat> that you need cut out. As you can see, I clicked increment enough, but now areas of the original line art are even being cut out. So if you have an issue where there is still a lot of white, that is something you can do to fix that. In my case, however, it looks fine with it. The next thing you want to do is go to save as. Make sure you save as a ping image. And when it says ping image save options, you're going to want it to be 32. Each pixel has opacity. Now, when you want to post this image, you'll be able to do so knowing that you just have your picture. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you have a great day.